70 years ago today, on February 16, 1954, WNEM graced the airwaves for the first time, broadcasting from inside Flint's Bishop Airport. Decades and hundreds of thousands of stories later, we're back where it all began. Though much has changed, our commitment to keeping you informed hasn't. And just like TV5, Flint Bishop International Airport has seen many changes of its own. We got an inside look at the airport of the past and the promises of the future. The sounds of the symphony to the skies. Come right up, ma'am. I can help you. It's a familiar chorus here at Flint Bishop International Airport, where passengers hum along as staff keep everything in tune. And you happen to have the bag, the tag number. But what's now a gateway to the world started out as a gift. Thank you for choosing Bishop International Airport. Back in 1928, Arthur Giles Bishop donated the land for the original airport, which thrived in the early years of commercial air travel. But decades later, the airport and its runways had started to show cracks. They all turn them over was so bad it had leaks. There were buckets in the lounges to collect the water coming through the roof. By the late 1980s, the winds of change had arrived. After support from voters and the creation of an airport authority, the Flint Bishop International Airport we know today was born. So this is the construction of what we're in right that, now? That's right, that's right. Really proud of everything in Flint. Dwayne Burnash was just starting his career in the maintenance department. I was so proud to be here. After 35 years, he's seen a lot of changes roll through. I kind of chuckle because I picked up my corded phone and they offered me a job here at Bishop Airport. I pulled in here listening to my cassette player and my vehicle. It's the same particular scenario where... Over the next few years, Bernash watched as plans for the new terminal took flight, even moving a major throughway around its new grounds. And you can see where this is original Bristol Road, and it used to go straight through to here. By October 1993, passengers started flowing through its colorful carpet, eventually totaling hundreds of thousands each year, some a bit more high profile than others. I've been here for four current presidents. Coming across the runway. Wow. You know, you take it in stride, right? It's part of your job. You have to, you know, do your job, but at the same time, you're, you know, you know, it's kind of a privilege. Was that George H.W. too? Yeah, all of these were, yeah. President Clinton right there. Despite the many highs over the years, there have also been days that stunned this airport into silence. The 2017 stabbing of a police officer, 9-11, and the pandemic. It was as if I was reliving 2001 when you saw a quiet terminal here, and no one knew that what was going to be the next day. But Flint Bishop is now ushering in a new day. It's stepping up its appearances, from the roof to the ticket counters, its logo, and the floors. Replacing the carpeting, but most importantly, there's going to be terrazzo flooring. Popular Flint landmarks are going to be embedded in this terrazzo. CEO Nino Sapone hopes when people walk into the future Flint Bishop, there will be no mistaking it. We want people, when they come to this airport, they see Flint. But those aren't the only plans taking off. Someday, in the near future, we're going we're to get some international service. Even though he's tight-lipped about what those future departures could be, Sapone does say it's only up from here. There's so much opportunity and potential here in the growth capability this airport has. It's just, it's, it's tremendous. <laughs> Tearing out a whole new page at Flint Bishop International Airport right. as it flies to new heights. CEO Nino Sapone tells us the renovations should be complete by next spring and the Federal Inspection Station for International Travel should be complete by mid-2025. The airport also expects it will surpass pre-pandemic numbers this year.